Hey, here we are. Final episode of the season. We're looking at plays. We're always looking at plays and getting better as basketball officials. Let's look at plays today. How many plays? Five plays. Stick around. Greetings, everyone. Welcome back. Five Play Friday for the final time this season. Of course, my name is Greg Austin with The Better Official. We craft video to help basketball officials get better. And we're doing that by looking at plays, analyzing all of the things. Of course, we like to start with a you make the call play. What do you have on this play at the basket on play number one? Up top. Here's Allen, now over to the right side, Bush to the free throw line with it, comes to a stop, skip it over to the right side, Brody Metzger looking for a cut, not there, up top to the other Metzger, dribble drive for him, spin move, bounce pass, Ooh. nice find to Cameron Allen, blocked by Chase Christensen off the backboard, Coach Rauch wants it, goaltending, no call instead, Dunk. There you have it. Block shot off the backboard. What do you have? Correct ruling, incorrect ruling. Put your ruling in the comments and stick around to the end of the video where we'll look at all of the things on play number one. But as we like to do, we're moving on quickly to play number two. Yeah, it's a small state, but they have state finals. Let's go to Rhode Island. There's point two on the clock on this play and of course we know all sorts of bad things can happen when there's point two on the clock let's take a look at this play you know just sitting there going oh god when do i do it yep mm -hmm. it's good timeout and uh lasalle is out of timeouts classical still has two left they want to take another one here to see what we got Simpson and Zagrozny talking right in front yeah, of us. Yeah, here's Simpson. And it looks like uh, it's going to be Sohn defending now on the uh, sideline here. There's the lob. That's not going to count. Because... No. Nope. That will not count. That's a violation. Yeah, because it, yeah, nobody touched it. It went out of bounds. Yeah. It's a violation. Yes. The ball's going to go back to Classical. And timeout for Classical. Ah, uh, heartbreak for the cheerleaders. Heartbreak for the cheerleaders. So our crew absolutely nails it. There's no confusion. Perfect clarity. Get the call right. Of course, this is unusual. It's stunning when it happens in the game. It's such a key moment of a one-point game, right? The tension builds, and but our crew is unfazed. This is a throw-in violation by rule. The throw-in unlike what the announcer says it's not because it went out of bounds or whatever uh it's simply a throw-in violation by rule we resume to the original throw-in spot our crew obviously elite about their rules knowledge in this situation yeah yeah not something you see every day an unexpected end to a critical critical moment of a key game but what do we want in those situations we want just absolute command of the rules, clear uh, communication, etc. Understanding exactly what happens next, displaying strength and confidence on the court because we know the rules, right? Others might be confused. Our announcer, our color commentary guy, he was on it. Wow, that's pretty elite for a color commentary guy. That's all I'm saying. All right, fantastic. A great play to see. Uh, just so that we're prepared when it happens in our game. Rules knowledge is key in end-of-game situations. You know what else is key? 
acknowledging our tremendous show supporters. Who is up on the show supporter big board today? Rod Helling, A.J. Rassi, Kelly Hefner, Jack Nelson, and Geriatric. Much appreciated and much love. You want to support the show? There's a link there. It's in the show description. It's in the first pin comment. And I'm going to put one this week. No, I can't. I can't, man. I have to put it up above. All right, let's move on. Let's look at our next play. Tanager fans trying to get their team pumped up on defense, and a foul will be whistled. And a technical will be assigned, I think. Is that what they said? Yeah, well, it's... couldn't see what happened there. No. With our, our, her think, back was to us, so. I think we got a personal foul and then a technical foul. But the technical is going to go against T and the personal against Vermillion, I believe. Yeah, so Clayberg will pick up the technical, which becomes a personal. Brooklyn Voss picks up the personal. Everyone's just a little confused we're right gonna now. We're going to get two shots for Vermillion, and then we're going to get or two shots for T, and T. then two shots for Vermillion. This is the personal foul. Clayberg will make good on the first. Yeah, and that's easy to explain because Darren Vandenberg came over and just flat out said it. Right. <laughs> we could hear what he said. Yep. People in the in the stands couldn't hear that. All right. So we have a foul that results in bonus free throws and a subsequent technical foul by the player who was fouled. Right? Our crew makes a ruling. Our crew gets together. They talk about how they're going to administer the play. And everything is done impeccably, impeccably by this crew that's really fit and athletic looking. I don't appreciate that, man. You're showing us all up. But uh, this is, you know, we love to look at plays to learn about what crews do wrong, etc. We love to look at plays and look about what crews do right. In this instance, our calling official has two fouls. They get together. The three of them get together. One of the officials is observing the players. This is fantastic. It's not a situation where it's necessary to send them to their benches. It's really business, straightforward. I have a foul that will result in bonus free throws, and I have a subsequent technical foul. We're going to do this. We're going to shoot the two for the bonus with the lane cleared. We'll go down to the other end. We'll shoot the technical foul, and then the resulting throw-in will be here. Right? So, just really well done, and we like to look at things being really well done. Like our crew from Rhode Island on that last second uh, ball that went in the basket, nailed it. This crew nails it, right? We like to see nails it, because when we go out on the court, we want to nail it. We want to know what good looks like. Uh, so, good job by this crew. Checked all the boxes, all the boxes. I wouldn't do a single thing differently on a play like this. They knew exactly what they had, clearly communicated, took care of business, understood what was going to happen next, administered the game, uh, and on they go. So fantastic work. All right, end of game, state final. State final, final seconds. What do you have on this throw-in play with less than five seconds remaining? Let's take a look. Corvian community first ever appearance versus reigning champs Wilson Prep. Jack Hudson has it. And a foul on the drive. Oh, Ferguson tripped up Adrian Scott. Scott and Ferguson just battling for position. And it looked like Ferguson may tripped on McCutcheon but into the body of Scott. Wow, and these. All right, player wrestled to the ground in this key moment. We're going to rule a foul in this instance and award bonus free throws with no time coming off the clock here with 4.1 remaining in the game. Mm. 
Okay, so we've got two players, two very strong players, two very physical players fighting off ball. In this instance, our center official addresses the two prior to the throw-in. Throw-in happens. There's some hand fighting between the two, and then the defender in this instance goes to the floor, grabbing the offensive player. Why did they go to the floor in this instance? They went to the floor because White 2 had an illegal screen. The illegal screen causes the player to stumble and grab, right? This would be a great, fantastic get from any of the three officials in this instance in a tie game. That would be a great ruling in this instance. But in the end, I mean, it's clear. So we have, you know, our defensive player hooking. There's no doubt there's physical contact. But the thing that jumps off on the play, the thing that ex- accelerates the physical contact between the two players off ball and really leads to the actual foul on the play is the illegal screen. This would be such a fantastic get from our crew. In the end, you could you could not say that, that uh, the blue defender did not have an arm, right? Both things can be true. Both things can be true. Action between the players. Yeah, yeah. But in the end, we award bonus free throws in this situation. In a tie game, we're going to give that team. Uh, they make, I believe, both of them in this instance. And we'll have the subsequent play coming up in our next play. Um, a great play to look at. Be super aware of all of the things. Make your ruling in your game and get plays right. All right, so that play led to two free throws. Our visitors, rather, in this instance, get the ball with a chance to win the game. Let's see what happens on the next play. Timeout. What does Wilson Prep have drawn up here? Last chance for the reigning state champions. Here's Brandon Anderson. Options. Barron kicks it. Murder for the win! Oh, he's fouled! Wait, he's fouled! Oh, what a mistake for the Cardinals. And the referees are confirming this. Let's take a look. They're going to say it's on the floor. No, they're going to say three shots. Checking is it a shooting foul? And that's what they have called right now. Let's take a look. There's plenty of time. You could add a second on the clock. They'll add point six. Yeah. So three free throws for senior captain Leslie Minner. Gets a tie game. No timeouts for Corvey, and they got to let it go here. <laughs> Leslie Minner for the lead. Has it. Wilson Prep knows they're seconds away from back to back titles. Opportunity here for the Cardinals. The heave. Scott. Oh, it's off. No good. Back to back champions. Wilson Prep. Oh, okay. So I was uh, wrong. They, they guess they only made the second of two. No, they must have missed the second of two free throws. Three tenths of a second came off. We've got a throw in on the end line. Throw ahead play. Bump. Do we have arm contact? Do we have a common foul that would result, I assume at this point of the game, in bonus free throws? The team, the officials award a shooting foul in this instance. The player goes to the line for three, makes all three, two-point lead. Let's look at all of the things. There is definite contact on that play. 
was the player shooting the basketball? Are we going to err on the side of a player shooting the basketball there? Uh, I wish I knew the foul count. I do not. I'm going into the assumption we have uh, are in a bonus situation here. Is there any look at the clock? Or, I'm sorry, at the uh, team foul count? I don't see it. I don't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, just uh, elite athleticism by our shooter on this play. Tremendous. Let's take a look. So we have definite contact here by White 1. Has our player begun their habitual throwing motion? To me, they seem to be catching the basketball. Is there arm contact there? Let's look at all of the things. Our crew gets together. They come up with a ruling. Like our trail official may have said, it looks to me like there's arm contact after the after the player uh, leaves the floor. That's what appears. Our crew gets together. What do they say? It's like I'm. I have the bump. The center official might say I have the arm contact. Our lead official should have had a look at the play as well, since this is our ball game. Let's take a look. Is there arm contact by our defender as well? Hard to see from that angle. But the the shot behaves in a strange fashion, like there was contact, but let's take a look. Oh. Huh. Sadness. Right. It looks like the defender's arm goes behind the arm. And then when the player extends, there is contact on the plate. That's what it looks like from here. I'd love to see another angle. Uh, if there was something different. But our player makes all three free throws. We have a two-point game with .6 on the clock. Obviously, the, the opponent has no timeouts remaining, and they just run and execute an excellent play. I don't know if they'd drawn this up or if it's just their staple play, but this is an elite length-of-the-court pass. Player catches and throws it to a teammate. Does our clock start properly on the subsequent play? Is our crew in great position here? Whoops. Mounts for Corby, and they got a slim minter for the lead. Let's take a look at the end. Wilson Prep knows they're seconds away from back Ice to Ice water. Titles. Ice water. Right? Not playing defense, though. Let's see what our team does. That is elite. This kid might be the quarterback. Oh, just bat it, lad. Does our clock start properly? No, no, it does not. Again, we are we are just at the whim of the shot clock or the clock operator in this instance. That ball is touched. You can see on the backboard, on the on the back, the stanchion. We've got a clock. Still hasn't started. And there, it starts when the second player touches it, right? Which is almost like a human nature thing that we would expect in this instance. Who's going to chop the clock in this instance? Did we chop the clock? Opportunity here right. for the Our trail chopping the clock in this instance does nothing. Everybody's looking down at the other end of the court. If I'm the center oh, official here, I'm going to mirror the chop Scott. or chop it myself. Oh, I would do it as lead as well. Anything we could do to help our, uh, our timer in this instance. But in the end, it is a moot point. The team does not score. It's just a fantastic play. One that we wouldn't necessarily be ready at. You know, what do we expect? 
normally in this instance, a team will have a timeout available. They go to the bench. We're looking at all the things for this uh, last-second shot scenario. Uh, so lots to think about here. Uh, going to the line for the three free throws. What a mistake for the Cardinals. Yeah, yeah. So a great end of game scenario one that we can look at we we'll see look. these scenarios over and over again what would be, what do i want to be able to do in these situations how can i adjudicate plays floor, properly no, how can i shots. be aware of all of the things that we need to be aware of Second, in these foul, situations right our crew does a great up. job here there's plenty of time. If that ball had gone in, it would have been yeah, interesting. But in the end, no, no. Hey, back at the start of the show, we had that play. Ball off the backboard. The one that causes all the consternation in the gym. Let's take a look back at play number one. Up top. Here's Allen now over to the right side. Bush to the free throw line with it. Comes to a stop. Skip it over to the right side. Brody Metzger looking for a cut. Not there. Up top to the other Metzger. Dribble drive for him. Spin move. Bounce pass. Nice find to Cameron Allen. Blocked by Chase Christensen off the backboard. Coach Rauch wants a goaltending. No call instead. Dunk. Up top, here's Allen, now over to the right side, Bush, to the free throw line with it, comes to his... All right, the first thing we have on this play is a sweet pass for backdoor action, cut to the basket. Love to see that on the court. But of course, the question here is, do we have goaltending on this play? Of course, we know that at other levels, NCAA men's, NBA, etc., once the ball contacts the backboard, it is considered to be on its downward flight, and this would be a goal 10 violation. But then we know as high school officials that the when the ball is off the backboard, that does not necessarily mean a, back, a, a goal tending violation. And so our default is, oh wait, that's going to be legal. But we could still have a combination of both. It's off the backboard and it's on its downward flight. And we can't give up on plays just because it was off the backboard and then it was contacted. I think we have that on this play. We have the ball uh, off that is on the downward flight, has a chance to go in. And we should have a goaltending violation on this play. Let's take a look at all of the things. First of all, love seeing this backdoor cut. That's awesome. Right When the player contacts the net, of course, that's nothing on this play. But, yeah, 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 I think we missed that. I think we missed that. What was your ruling on the play? Right. So the key takeaway for me is just because, just because we know the high school rule is different, we can't get hung up on that. We still have to evaluate the play on its merits, a lesson that I learned, we've all learned the hard way, the hard way. Uh, when you see a play that your brain says, oh, wait a minute, off the backboard, high school legal, ah, coach, coach, that's legal. No, no, not necessarily, not necessarily. And of course, if the ball is contacting the, the, uh, the outline of the box, we could have basket interference as well. Not clear that our center official is engaged with evaluating whether this is a goaltending violation or not. Uh, just not clear. Not clear. Um, but either the center or the trail could come get this from their angle. Yeah. So. Takeaway for me is on plays like this, don't give up on the play, right? Continue to evaluate. Understand that you know the high school rule. Yes, yes you do. But don't get hung up on the fact and, and, and just like stop officiating. As some of us in the past, 
may have done at that time you know that one. Okay, fantastic. All right, let's take a look at one final play for the season, a bonus play. Let's take a look. What do you have here? Officials have, have, have done. They've let them play. They call a fair game. And Scottsburg is playing really well. Clancy was 17. Good job by Bowles to draw the defense. And what do we got? I think there's going to be a discussion because after Clancy hit the three, he turned to his crowd and was a little overly demonstrative. Yeah. And we'll see what the conversation is between the officials. I know we saw a technical foul called against Lance Jones in Purdue when he did the same thing in, 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 in the IU game. And you, you just can't do that. I mean, I understand you're excited. Just keep playing. Keep playing. Yeah. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Yes. No, wait a minute. Bossy. I, did, I didn't see it. I looked down at my stat sheet, and whatever happened, I didn't see it. But it, it puts it, it, an intentional foul, and it puts uh, Clancy back in the free throw line. I thought maybe they were going to have something to say about the sure. way he celebrated that three, but that apparently was not the case. My apologies. Well, he pushed. Yeah, he got pushed, and so because, and because of that, they, they called a, a, a flagrant foul. A technical foul, and so uh, 19 for Clancy. Well, let's see. I, I put a technical foul on two members of the Scottsburg basketball program today that uh, didn't get one, so. Okay, scored goal, player going to take the ball out of bounds while they're sort of engaged with an opponent, gives them an extended arm, and our officials rule something, something. So let's just look things through here, right? First of all, our new trail is in great position, observes everything about the play, has a whistle, makes a ruling, gets together. These are fantastic habits and fundamentals. We've sort of lost our fouling player. Where is he? Where is he? We get the right one. It's unclear exactly what is this. Are we ruling an intentional foul in this instance? We have a, the player. This is not the player who was offended on the play, so it's kind of a technical foul. But then ultimately we resume with the ball at the point of interruption instead of the division line. So, you know, we uh, we get a little bit off in the end. Is that a big deal? Not necessarily. Uh, but we want to be our best in these state playoff game situations. We also want to be aware, hey, we're in the fourth period with two and a half minutes remaining. This game is lopsided. We've got a 15-point lead. While Red does have an opportunity to come back and win this game, we are looking for frustration by our uh, team that's, uh, that's losing. We are looking for unsporting, taunting, etc. by our team that is ahead. That's just a natural situation where we get uh, when the game gets a little lopsided toward the end. So we don't want to miss those things. We got players competing for the rebound here. They've probably been competing all game. Right? Get off me, bro. Does it rise? In the, in the official's judgment, it does rise. This is a dead ball technical foul. Any player or eligible substitute should be able to shoot. White 32 is probably their best free throw. He does attempt. But of course, with any technical foul, the resumption of play would be at the division line opposite the table. So in the end, that's really the only thing we've got uh, incorrect here. And again, not a huge impact on this game. But great habits and fundamentals. Here's what I have. I have this player with a tactical foul, right? Uh, if we'd had the number, yeah, that helps. Yeah, so we like to see plays just so that we can do all of the things, get better as basketball officials. 
I appreciate each and every viewer who has watched us this year on Five Play Friday. We've had a lot of plays, a lot of uh, great opportunities to get better as basketball officials. And one of the ways that that happens is we've got a tremendous group of show supporters, and I would like to thank them right now now who is up on the show supporter big board rod helling is up on the board aj rossi is on the board kelly heathner from north carolina jack nelson and geriatric much appreciated much love much love yes you can support the show yes there's an opportunity here down below all the usual places and yes i will put one up above a solid ask as i always do if you find value take an opportunity to like this video right now it's super helpful and much appreciated and we've got additional video content available for you as well as training opportunities available for you we will see you intermittently potentially over the summer but thank you for watching and we'll see you in the very next video take care everybody